Okay, well, welcome everyone to the summer holiday reading webinar. We're going to get started in just one minute's time to this event tonight. I'm joined at a long table by four amazing panellists from Vision Australia and I'll introduce them all to you in just a minute. We're actually sitting in the library at our Kuyong Centre and so behind us is a number of very interesting looking books but hopefully you can keep your attention on us tonight. Um, and interestingly, for a summer holiday reading webinar, it isn't that summery here in Melbourne, but we'll try and warm you all up with our great tips and ideas tonight. So um, today we have four great panellists from our Vision Australia Library team. So starting from my right, we have Stephen Jolly, Library Ambassador. Hello everyone, great to be with you at an event which is going way beyond the venue, thanks to the technology. Thanks Stephen. We also have Jamie Kelly. Hello Cass, lovely to be here and um, to share this evening with you. Great, and we have Anne Ford. Hi Cass and hello everyone who's tuned in. And at the end of the table we have Anthea Taylor. Hi Cass and thanks for letting me be part of this. Very welcome Anthea. So tonight we're going to be talking all things summer holiday reading. So we're going to be talking through our recommended books for the summer, which I'm very much looking forward to hearing and getting a few tips myself. Uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about the library and of course how you can actually read these amazing books when you're on holidays, on the move or perhaps by the beach. So I'll remind you that there's two ways that you can ask questions tonight. The first one is by email. So you can email webinar, that's W-E-B-I-N-A-R, at visionaustralia.org with your name and question. So that's the email address that we sent the information about how to log in to from tonight. So if in doubt, you can always just reply to that email and we'll get it. The second way is you can send a text message. So SMS, this number, 0438. 792407 with your name and question. So those two ways again are emailing webinar at visionaustralia.org or texting 0438 792407 remembering to pop your name and question in either way. And we're going to get through as many questions as possible from you tonight so please send them through we'd love to hear from you. So we might just jump straight in and uh, think about what are those amazing books coming that we should know about that might be coming up or that are in the library that we should be reading this summer. So we'll start with thinking about what were the five most requested books in 2015 through the Vision Australia Library. Uh, Anthea, are you able to share some information on that? Oh, I certainly can. Thanks, Cass. Well, the, fir the first book is The Narrow Road to the Deep North by Richard Flanagan. He won the Booker Prize last year for this particular book, and it's one I can talk about because I am currently reading it at the moment. So it's set in the Second World War, and it's about Dorigo Evans, a prisoner of war in the Japanese camp for the Thai Burma Railway. And it is very confronting because it talks about the circumstances and the situations of the prisoners of war, but it also talks about his story and how he copes after the war. And for me, it was quite a good learning sort of experience, thinking, oh yeah, I know a little bit about the Second World War, the prisoners of war, but this goes into greater detail. Great, so that has been a very popular book in the library this year? Yes, yes it has, and it was last year as well. Mm, interesting. So what was being the second most popular book? Again, the second one, and this, this is one of my favourite favourite books, is To Kill a Mockingbird. And I think people think, oh, well, you know, that was published in the 1960s. Why, why is it so, so popular? But Harper Lee published a book this year called Go Set a Watchman, which is set 20 years after To Kill a Mockingbird. So there's been a resurgence because people want to know what, what's this book about? And the, To Kill a Mockingbird, it's about racism 
in the um, small town in Alabama. And it's about the small town prejudices as well. And it's seen from the eyes of an eight-year-old scout. And her father, Atticus, is a lawyer and defends a black man against, against a rape. And also, too, intriguing in that is this mysterious Boo Radley, who the children think is a, is a boogeyman. I think that's one of the books I, um, everyone is supposed to read, but I haven't read yet, so I think yes. I'll have to quickly add that to my list this summer, especially after that great description. Thanks, Anthea. So what has been the third most requested book in 2015 through the library? Anne? Um, well, surprise, surprise, Judy Nunn. One of her books has come up third on the list, and Judy Nunn's one of our very favourite authors here at the library. And the book's called Alianne. And Alianne is set in southern Queensland, and it's about uh, the main character is Big Jim Durham, who builds a sugar, um, a big sugar mill for his French wife, Aliane, in a rather ruthless manner. And it's all about the southern Queensland town and the sugar industry um, way back in the 1881. So um, if you have read uh, Judy Nunn before, you will really enjoy this next book and it's been certainly very popular. Great. And what has been another requested book in 2015? Um, another requested book, the fourth one, and this is another book that's a bit like To Kill a Mockingbird, has been around for quite a while, and it's The Thornbirds by Colleen McCulloch. Um, it's been made into a TV movie. Um, everyone, a lot of people have read it, but it's still being asked for regularly at the library. Um, and for those who haven't read it, it's about the uh, extraordinary, over three generations of the Clancy family, set in Australia, in Central Australia and various countries, um, various states within uh, Australia, and it's one of those very much loved books that just keeps being read over and over. Fantastic. Thanks, Anne. And so we said it was a top five, so what was the fifth most requested book in 2015 through the library? And the fifth book is 52 Waratah Avenue by Lynn Wilding. And like the Thornbirds, which Anne just mentioned, it's a family saga and family sagas are so, so very popular and really who doesn't love a bit of a family saga? And this features Laura Beaumont and she has established a department store, Ashworth, but she's not well. She wants to know how is the, the department store going Going to survive? Do they need to sell it? Do, do her children come in and take it? She has two daughters. One lives overseas and is a pianist. Another daughter is interested, but she's also suspicious of her her sister. So it's about sort of that dynamics within within families. So they all sound like really fantastic books. No wonder they've been so popular this year through our library. But I'm really interested, since we have two library experts on our panel, I want to know what you recommend that we should read this summer. So, Anthea, what do you think we should be reading? I think, Cass, the, the books that we're going to recommend are sort of fairly new to, to the library and we know they've been popular. The first two I'm going to recommend are in the true crime category, which public libraries around the world, is, it's one of the most popular genres. The first one is Malash, Inside Australia's Biggest Manhunt, a detective story by Clive Small. And as most of our um, participants in the webinar will, will know or remember about Ivan Malash, the serial killer, this is what this book is about. He had, sort of took his victims to the Bengalow Forest in New South Wales. It was one of the largest manhunts in, in Australia and an investigation that absolutely gripped the nation. This is a story about how he was caught, about the um, detectives that were involved. So it's chilling, it's forensic, it has some compassion, but it's again, it, it's the interest that drives it from it for, for a lot of um, readers. Fantastic. And now we've had a question come through from the audience about how we spell the names of the authors. So what I might do, rather than us spelling them tonight, we'll make a list of all these books available afterwards for everyone at home so they don't have to be furiously taking notes right now and we can uh, keep hearing those wonderful recommendations. So what is the second recommendation? 
So the second recommendation is This House of Grief, the story of a murder trial by Helen Garner. And she's one of Australia's most acclaimed authors generally of fiction, but she's written this book, the non-fiction, about the mur supposed murder of the Farquharson boys back in 2005 on Father's Day when Robert Farquharson was driving his children back to Winchelsea in country Victoria. They drove into a lake and only he as the father survived. So the, the court case was about, he was um, alleged to have murdered the children. He was, was convicted. So again, it looks at the court case, you know, as a um, man, so the bro his marriage had already broken up, but he and his wife were quite good friends, but they've now, because of all of these circumstances, how they've distanced themselves from each other, how unpredictable the justice system is. Sounds like a very interesting book. And who is that book by again? It's by Helen Garner. Helen Garner, great. And so um, I'm getting a nice top five recommended read. So what is number three on the list? Uh, number three is The Dressmaker by um, Rosalie Hamm. Now, Rosalie Hamm has written a number of books and The Dressmaker has just been re uh, recently made into a movie, which is doing very well in the box office at the moment. And for those who are wondering about what's the book about, it's about a, a dressmaker who's uh, learned her craft in France and she returns to her original hometown in a small t country town to um, uh, get uh, to re-engage with the people in her small town and um, she meets everyone and they're all very suspicious of her at the beginning but gradually she has them all wearing the most beautiful French gowns but um, she gradually, uh, things go a bit sour and she decides to wreak revenge. So it's a very, uh, the movie is doing very well and the book is very well written. So if you like uh, a bit of French, a bit of French class, a bit of country town and a bit of revenge, you'll enjoy this one. Fantastic. Thanks, Anne. I've definitely seen the ads for the movie, so reading the book's a really good idea. So what is number four so on the number, recommended list? So number four is Make Me by Lee Child, again, one of our very um, sort of popular authors. And this is the latest Jack Reacher book. And for Jack Reacher fans, this is the book for you. So at this point, Jack Reacher, he's really got no place to go. He's got nothing to do. So I thought, oh, I'm going to go on a bit of a one day, day holiday. It will be fine but that doesn't go according to plan. He lands in a sort of a very small ghost, ghost town, but there's a woman waiting for a miss, missing colleague. There's a cryptic note about 200 deaths. Then there's also the very watchful community. So it's mystery and intrigue, and it really is a quest into the heart of darkness of a town. Fantastic. So, number five. And for those people who are science fiction, science fantasy reader, we've got the final book in the Discworld series by Terry Pratchett, which is called Shepherd's Crown. It's another Tiffany, um, Tiffany aching adventure, and, um, and it is the final in the series. And it once more draws us back into the Discworld where strange and mysterious things happen. So um, for all those Terry Pratchett fans, uh, the, the book is awaiting you to read. Fantastic. So they're the five. So all five of those are available in our library at the moment. Is that right? Yes, they are. Fantastic. But I heard that we've got a few coming up that you might be able to look forward to this summer. And in fact, there's three really exciting ones to look forward to. Can you just tell us about those? I certainly, well the first one I've got on the my list is Reckoning a Memoir by Magna Shavansky and I've actually uh, just finished reading this book myself and it is a true memoir. It's a true memoir of her family and herself and coming to terms with her family's history and her, and her um, rise to stardom. 
Um, it's a book with laughter in it. It's a book with some sadness in it. Um, and it's one of those memoirs that once you start reading, you really can't put it down. So it's well worth keeping your eye out for it because it's in production at the moment. Great. So what's another one coming up in production that we can look forward to? Um, the, uh, the next one that's in production is called The Great Plains by Nic Nicole Alexander. And Nicole Alexander has written a number of books generally set in the heart of Australia. Um, this one is set, uh, takes us to a captivating journey from the American Wild West to the wilds of Outback Australia. And then it takes us through the Great Depression and onward um, through, what, uh, through Australia. So this one is full of characters which are full of life and laughter and um, I think people will enjoy this book too. Fantastic. So uh, that was the, the two books so far, three books. And I think Anthea's yeah, got I another one. So one. One more, um, Ash Island by Barry Maitland. And this features Detective Sergeant Harry Beltry, who previously had had a near-fatal confrontation with one of his colleagues. Came a bit of a departmental embarrassment, so he got sh sort of shifted from Sydney to a supposedly quiet life in Newcastle. But it ended, ends up not being so quiet. There's, of course, there's a bit of crime, a bit of mystery, and there's a, body, a body's been found buried just off Ash Island. But there's more. Harry's also got unfinished business. There was a car crash previously that killed his parents, and he's um, blinded his wife. So he's also looking in into that. Right. So they sound like three very interesting things to look forward to this summer. So they're all coming out over the next summer period? Yes, so um, within this is the summer 2015, 2016, they're all in production as we speak. Well, I'm very glad that we've got those ones. We mentioned them tonight. I've had uh, uh, Kathy write in and say that she's already read a couple of the books that we've, uh, regist uh, we've mentioned already. So I'm glad we had those three for you, Kathy. I hope you enjoy them. Uh, so they're a really great list of books and as I said we will have all of those books in a list with the author and their title available for everyone at home afterwards so don't worry if you missed anything. What I will do is quickly just refresh everyone's memory about who's on the panel tonight for anyone who joined us late. So my name's Cassandra, I work in Client Engagement at Vision Australia and joining me tonight we have Stephen Jolly. Hi all. Jamie Kelly. Hello everyone, I've just been enjoying all these new books. They sound great, don't they? Oh, wonderful. We have Anne Ford. Hi everyone. And Anthea at the end. Good evening. Fantastic. So we've got some questions coming through, which is fantastic. But what I might do first is just make sure everyone knows how they actually become a member of the library so that they can get all these fantastic books in alternate formats. So, and how do you actually become a member of the library? Well, all you need to do, you can become a member in a number of different ways. You can either call us on 1300 654 656 and ask us to send you a membership pack or we can even join you up over the phone. Um, we can do that when necessary. Um, you can also email us at library at visionaustralia.org and we will send you a membership via straight through you, to you via the email or you can also hop online to our website and um, download the membership pack yourself and fill it in and just email it or fax it or pop it in the mail and it will come back to us. We generally have memberships added to our systems within 48 hours and before you know it, you'll be receiving books or being able to download books um, and happily reading away. And what format books do we have? Um, look, we, we, you can access books in a variety of ways. We can we access for them via CD. Mm -hmm. You can also access them via um, our 3G player, which is a little like a radio, and it will just play the books to you in your own home. You can also download them yourself, or you can listen to them via our app on your iPad or your iPhone. So the books are available in a variety of ways. You can also borrow books from our Braille 
library if you're a Braille user, and we have quite a large collection that you can access also. So uh, the Vision Australia Library is for people who are blind or have low vision or have a print disability. So that's correct. It sounds like we have books in Braille and audio for people at that's home. That's correct. Fantastic. And so how do you work out what books you're going to get or set um, that up? When you are filling out the membership form, there's a section that asks for what type of material you like to read. And we've got about 105 categories that you can choose from. And for some people that works very well because that just the books come out to you automatically in those categories. But for other people who like to have a bit more hands-on, you can also um, access our catalogue. Um, when you become a member, we give you an ID and a password, and you can access our catalogue and choose the books yourself, ask them to be posted out or download them or add them to your download queue, and they will go onto your 3G player or onto your app, onto the app on your iPhone. So you can access two ways. You can have us help select, you can select yourself, or you can call us up or email us with any books, any suggestions you'd like for us to add to your bookshelf so that you've got extra reading or books that you've heard people talking about. Fantastic. Now I've got a question that's come through from Michael. So Michael's recently read a book from the Vision Australia collection, so already a member, which is fantastic. Uh, called June is a Four Letter Road by Griselda Spriggs, which he described as a really terrific book. So how do, uh, his question is this, how do I find other books in the collection that would be along similar lines to that one that they enjoyed? Well, uh, it's Jamie, I'm yeah. happy to answer that, Cass. Fantastic. Um, so if Michael wants to either ring us and ask us if we've got other similar books to that type of subject, mm -hmm. or he can go on to our online catalogue at iaccess.visionaustralia.org, mm -hmm. um, he can log in and he can do a search for that subject or author and look for similar books um, like he's already got. Mm -hmm. And that's a very popular way of, of actually, you know, trying to find your own books. So the um, the catalogue is very user friendly. Mm -hmm. You can, uh, you know, use the basic search and just type in a subject and uh, look at it that way, or you can do a more detailed search by using the advanced search page. Fantastic. And if they're not too sure how to do that, yep. they can call us up on the 1300 654 656 number mm -hmm. and someone will go through that process with them on the phone. Great. So, so there's a bit of help there if, yes. if it's someone's first time going online to order some books. Yes. Fantastic. We're definitely there to help. Great. And so you've got your books and you've finished reading them. How do you get more books? Well, you can um, go online and search for them. You can add them to your wish list so that you can go back and read them later. As you, um, or you can loan them by adding them to your loans mm -hmm. um, so that they'll either come to you on CD if that's what you prefer or we like people to download them or use our new Vision Australia Connect app, mm -hmm. which is now available through the Google Store and also through the iOS Store. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a very simple, easy to use app. At this stage, it just offers you our audio books and magazines. Um, but in February, we'll get newspapers and podcasts. And in, in June or thereabouts, we hope to add more functionality, including being able to search through the app for books directly. So there's a lot of exciting things to look forward to with the app. Yeah, fantastic. And so, Stephen, from your perspective, how do you find, you're a volunteer of the library and a member yourself, how do you find using the library to get what books you would like to read? It's pretty good. I can have my, uh, my requirements met. Uh, if I'm not sure what way to go, I can talk to one of the staff, and they really are friendly staff, we don't just say that. Um, they're a very dedicated mob, very passionate about their books, as you can hear from uh, Anthea and Anne uh, earlier, and uh, the reader services team really do convey that when they're talking about the books. Um, now that we have the online uh, facility, that's terrific to use the online catalogue to go and, and uh, just sort of scratch around and find the books that you want. Mm -hmm. um, and if people have other queries, they can easily contact the library. It, it, it's a, um, a very uh, thorough and, and attentive service. Fantastic. Thanks, Stephen. 
And now uh, you mentioned the app, Jamie. We've actually had a question come through very similar. So I'll ask that one. This is from Anna. Is it possible to access the catalogue from within the app itself? That'll be happening hopefully mid next year, mid 2016. Um, Anna, um, we're very excited about that because at the moment you still would either need to go on to the catalogue and add books yourself to mm -hmm. your loans or in the library we can do it for you. Um, I might also say too, for those people that don't have a smartphone or tablet, um, there are other handheld devices which are very popular and for a number of years the library have had Victor Streams and also the Plex Door Pockets mm -hmm. and um, they're popular just because they're very accessible. Um, you used to have to download the book from a computer to the SD card extracted to play the book but now these devices with the newer models you can download or stream directly to these devices from your online bookshelf so it just gives people another option apart from their smartphone or their tablet mm -hmm. to access um, books from the library and also other content. Mm -hmm. So do you, you must need an internet connection then for you, those ones Well, you work? do, yes, but there are some people who don't have internet and they actually go to their local library and the local library will download content for them and mm -hmm. put it onto their device. So there are other ways of getting access to the content. Mm -hmm. um, and if you want something portable, so some people might have a 3G player or a CD player, but mm -hmm. they want something portable as well. So they'll, they'll buy one of these little handheld devices like the Victor Stream and, and they'll go to their local library so when they're going away they'll have some books with them. So that, that's um, proved to be very popular because these handheld devices are very accessible and uh, for people that are low vision they like the tactile buttons and also the talking menus. Mm -hmm. The other good thing about them is that they have very good recording capabilities so if you want little note takers to record phone numbers and things they're very handy. Mm -hmm. But the app is certainly proving to be very popular. We're, we're very excited about the app and um, it'll be very exciting to see it grow in development. Mm. I know we have a few of the Vision Australia Connect app users at the panel. I think we've all got it, actually. Yes, yes. Yeah, we've all got it. We've all yes. got it, which is fantastic, especially for the webinar tonight. And how do you find the uh, Vision Australia Connect app to use? Oh, look, I've got it on my iPhone and I find it quite good. It's got very large buttons. They're a purple colour, but quite large buttons. So it's quite easy to see, to re, you know, to tap the play button and to rewind. And when it's in portrait, uh, the buttons actually, the buttons to touch take up the whole screen. If you turn the um, iPhone to landscape, it actually, the buttons become smaller on side, and, but then you can access the chapters. <laughs> so you can access it chapter by chapter. So, and it's quite, I found it quite easily to use and I didn't have to have, ask for much help or any help with getting going with it. It was just a matter of having a bit of a play and off I went. And once the books appear on your bookshelf, you just tap it once and it starts to play the book within a couple of seconds. And now, Anne, you actually gave me a really handy hint when uh, you were showing me the app when I first got it around how you can bookmark the catalogue in your phone and also have the app so you can order yes. your books and then go to the app. Can you just tell me a little yeah, bit about what, that? What, what I suggest to people is what they can do is to put um, the catalogue, uh, your, the front page to log into the catalogue onto your home screen of your iPad or your iPhone and then you also have the app sitting on your home screen mm -hmm. and then when you're logging in you just re tell it to remember who you know who you are so you just tap log in so you immediately can get to the catalog without having to fiddle going through google or trying to type in the addresses just sitting there on your home screen straight away and then it will just once you've found the book that you want and you've said you've told it to add it to your download queue it jumps straight into uh, the app and you've got the app right next to it you just tap the app and you're you're going and can I add to that too, if you mm -hmm. don't want to search for books but you would like to say have similar books that you had when you were getting CDs but online, the library can give you an online profile so you can get those same books in your bookshelf on your app. So when you open the app, your bookshelf can be all, all, always have three or four books mm -hmm. and if you don't want them, you just return them and get more the next day. So right. that's a good way for people to get books that don't necessarily want to go to the trouble of searching for their own books. It sort of cuts cuts out that searching mm. part, doesn't it? So you'll just get books coming to you? Yes. 
Fantastic. Um, and so I know there are, you know, we've already heard about some of the great recommended books we can read from Anne and Anthea. So how would I go about getting those books on my bookshelf? So you would either ring the library and the library could uh, add them to your request list or loan them to you. Mm -hmm. Or if you're used to using the online catalogue, you can log into iAccess. Now, a good handy shortcut if you're using your um, tablet or smartphone mm -hmm. is if you open your browser and key in ia.va.org.au, and I'm sure Cassie will give that out later again. Mm -hmm. That's ia.va.org.au. That'll take you to our access. If you haven't shortcutted or if you haven't added it to your screen, as Anne suggested, as a shortcut, log in and then simply search for the book. And then you would use the add to download queue option on the, um, with the book. And then that would put it onto your online bookshelf. Fantastic. Thanks, Jamie. And just a reminder to everyone at home that there's two ways that they can send in a question tonight and we'd love to hear from you. We've got some wonderful comments coming through, but please keep them coming. So the email address is webinar, that's W-E-B-I-N-A-R at visionaustralia.org and just pop your name and question in the email. And if you're a bit confused about what that email address in address is, just reply to the email we sent you telling you how to log on tonight and that will get to us. So it's webinar at visionaustralia.org or you can send a text message, so SMS to 0438 792 407. So I'll read that out again for you. It's 0438 792 407. So you can send a text to us um, make sure, of course, again, you pop your name and your question in the text message and we're going to get to as many questions as we can tonight in this webinar. So we're talking all about summer holiday reading and we've talked about what some great books are and how you can become a member of the library and start to talk a little bit about the new app that Vision Australia has released. But Stephen, I'm really interested in your perspective on the app. You use it using VoiceOver. Yes, I do. And um, I'm quite enjoying it. Um, I, I like exploring new apps, Cass. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, it, it's, it's one of the, this is one of those ones where um, I was able to get familiar with it very quickly uh, and get to do uh, most of the things that uh, I was expecting it was able to do. Mm -hmm. uh, a, a note of caution, um, this app is no different to um, every other good app around the place and that is that it, it has a bit of a settling in period that's required. Um, this is only the, the first version of it. Sometimes um, its performance is not as mature as we would expect but um, it's improving all the time and with future releases it will be really good but it's no different to anything else. We all have to be a bit patient with new apps but um, already what this is doing and the potential of it uh, is going to make it a, an outstanding facility to use. I like it. Well Stephen can I share some good news with you and everybody else listening. Um, I was hoping by today we would have seen new updates in the uh, Google Play Store and the iOS Store. There is a new update which will improve on some of those performance um, things that you were talking about. Mm. So probably tomorrow morning, um, hopefully, or Friday morning when you uh, t turn on your device, you'll see an update for the app that will, will improve some of those performance things. And the main thing with it is it is that just to um, don't tap on things too quickly. Um, it, for it, it sometimes needs a little bit of time to work through its processes. When you, when you first um, tap it to go into the app, um, you'll hear a beeping sound, and that, and that's because the app is actually logging into it and linking to the online catalogue. So, um, so wait for the beeps. Wait, wait for the beeps. That's a really good. Yeah. That's a really good feature, Jamie. Those yeah. uh, beeps while it's moving in, because other times there's just silence with yeah. other apps. And so we have had good. feedback around, oh, can we turn the beeps off? Which we may at the at some stage have an option in the settings to do that, but it actually is very handy to have that indication when you can't see, because mm. visually you can see that there's something happening, but unless there's something audible to tell you that things are happening in the background, you don't know. So, because mm. um, for the whole time for the the app has to sync with our online catalogue, even if a book's downloaded, um, you still need to be logged in to the catalogue. Right. I think just, um, Cats, with regards to the app, it's only been available for um, sort of three to four weeks. We have had over 300 members use the app. 
Fantastic. That's great. Yeah. yeah, really. So we're great. very pleased with that. Mm. And so I get on to everyone else to have a go. Yep, get well. onto it. That's good. Yeah. And does it cost any money to buy the app? Is it it's free. free? It's free. It's free. free. Fantastic. So, Could, um, Cass, can I also yeah. remind people, um, sure. the people that like to use our newspapers particularly, even though you can't get them through our app yet until early next year, you, um, you still can listen to them through the other apps that you use to like voice stream and things like that. So okay. the newspapers are still available, but we'll be very pleased when you can also get them through the VA Connect app. And now I've just got a question that has come through from Jennifer. How can I provide feedback about the app? The best way at the moment is through the library email address, that's the library at visionaustralia.org, mm -hmm. or you can use the feedback page through iAccess Online, there's a link there to the, uh, for feedback. Mm -hmm. In a future um, app release there will be a feedback option where you'll be able to pro um, send feedback yeah. about the app. Okay, and if someone's having problems using, need a little bit of a hand, can they get in touch with someone at the library? Please ring me tomorrow. Oh, ring <laughs> Jamie. Or, or, or anyone. anyone. Yeah, we're we're any happy to talk to you. We're, we're, there's a team of people yes. waiting to take your phone call. So if you've got any questions about using the app, feel please feel free to ask. Give them a break, Dave. Don't call too early in the morning. There's lots of people sleeping in. <laughs> Phones open at 9 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, they're open at 9. There yeah, you go. Um, all right, so um, we've talked a little bit about the app now, and you mentioned those other devices there, Jamie. Now, they're something someone would have to purchase. Is that right? The, we have all the models of the Victor Stream in the pocket sometimes in the library. If we've got them in stock, people can, um, can borrow them, or uh, depending on how new they've joined, they can, they can mm -hmm. rent them. Um, but they can also purchase the newer models, which is probably better because they get all the newer functions, including mm -hmm. Wi-Fi. Um, through the Vision Australia Equipment Solutions Shop, and they're both available. I think the uh, Linear Pocket, when we've got them, if you're a library member, I think is still around the $350 mark, and the Victor Stream is um, $435 at the moment, but I think there's a summer sale, and I think they're $50 off at the moment. I think they're $385. Now, um, so that's just something maybe worth checking out. Great. And now also on the table in front of you, we have another type of player. What's that one there? That's our, our 3G player, which is our, our new online um, desktop player. And mm -hmm. we have two versions of that. We've got the Wi-Fi version and the 3G version. And that's a bit like a desktop version of the, of the app. Mm -hmm. So that uh, for those people that don't have a computer, uh, we now offer them through the library service um, a th the 3G player or the Wi-Fi player where um, they turn the player on, it connects directly through the bookshelf, through the Optus network or through their Wi-Fi mm -hmm. to our online s system and uh, they can access their online bookshelf. So no CDs, they can have five books a day and also someone can request books for them if they want to mm -hmm. and um, they can listen 24-7, send a book back, they get a new one the next day. Um, when they um, turn on their player. So it's a great service and uh, it's proving to be very popular, mm -hmm. I have to say. Um, so it just means it's a way of getting direct access to books, no CDs. Um, Jamie, I just want to remind if people are travelling around um, during holiday times, yeah. um, they can still take their 3G as long as they've got the power cord with them and mm -hmm. plug it in if they're going down to somewhere else over Christmas, maybe from Melbourne up to Sydney or Sydney mm -hmm. down to Melbourne. Um, as long as uh, there's a, a mobile phone network close by, um, people can still take their 3G player with them. Great, that's that's good to hear. Thanks, Anne. And they, uh, they can also take their Wi-Fi player too, and if they want to, there is a way that they can uh, use the player to download books yep. to the player before they go away, oh, okay. um, and then they don't have to be connected to Wi-Fi to access their books. So, so you can organise yourself ahead, think, I'm going to get yes. Aunt Theodore Ann's wonderful list of books that we just yes. heard, put them on my Wi-Fi player before I go, mm -hmm. and then take it away with me. Yes. And, and you would also do that with our app. You would download the books okay. when you're on Wi-Fi, so that when you're outside your Wi-Fi network, you're not using up your own data, yep. and then you've got your books there sitting in your app for you to listen to when you're away. So you can, I understand you can stream them or download them, is that right? Yes. yes. So what's yes. the difference, Jamie? Well, streaming them means that you're listening to it as you go, like listening to the radio. Yep. Um, downloading them means that you, you're downloading the books. So the, the actual physical file sits on your phone, 
um, and you're not using up any mobile data yeah. away from your Wi-Fi. You can choose to turn that on in settings yeah. if you want to do that, but most people are more likely to want to download the books first. Great. Thanks, Jamie. Now, I've had a question come through about the app from Judy. Can you use the app on an Apple Mac computer? No, it's for an iOS device. That's for yep. a smartphone or an iPad. Yep. Um, you can certainly access our catalogue through the Mac and you can download books as you would on the Windows computer. Mm -hmm. um, but there is no app as such for the um, um, for the comp Apple computer. And then you could play them through an MP3 player on your Mac, on your Mac couldn't you? Yes, you yes. Yeah. yeah, so the app's just for smartphones and tablets. Uh, is that right? Yes, that's yeah. right. You okay. can get Daisy software for the um, Mac and for the Windows PC, which mm -hmm. gives you the same functions as, mm -hmm. as the app, um, but the, this app in itself might work on an Apple computer. Okay. And now we keep hearing this term, Daisy, which I hear a lot when talking about the Vision Australia Library. Stephen, can you tell me what Daisy is all about? Uh, just briefly, uh, for those who are not familiar with the concept of DAISY, it's a way of organising the content in, in a very convenient and accessible way. Um, we used to read books uh, in audio from the start to the back. Think of it like an old, uh, the old style tube of of lollies like the mm. fruit pastels and you take out the first one it's one flavour the next one's the next flavour and you can't actually get to the flavour you really want that's about five down until you go down those five mm -hmm. well daisy is more like a supermarket where the content is arranged in uh, groups of products in aisles and you can go to the door of the supermarket and you can go to any group of products you can walk straight to it we can go to a particular aisle, you can walk along that aisle a bit and then go, oh no, I want to go back to that, there was something there I wanted to look at on that shelf, so you can go back to that. So it gives you the freedom to move around in the content more. Mm -hmm. And um, it has other advantages uh, that there's file compression used, uh, the files are compressed as MP3 files, so we can get a lot more uh, in uh, an equivalent amount of space to what used to be required in the past if they were um, WAVE or, or CD audio files. Mm -hmm. um, so when they're put onto CDs, for instance, we can put about, you know, maybe 20 hours worth of content, all organised in a nice daisy way. Great. So it sounds like a really useful content system, the daisy one. It's used around the world and there are very good reasons for doing it. It's fantastic, really. It's also good to note, too, that the um, our books are also compatible with MP3 players. So if you've got a, okay. a portable DVD player or something that plays MP3 files but doesn't necessarily have give you all the wonderful DAISY features, mm -hmm. um, you can still listen to our books. Great. Thank you. And so, Stephen, what if someone doesn't feel very confident at using technology? What would you say they could do to read their books when on holidays? Well, um, there's a number of ways. Mm -hmm. Some people take their G3 player with them. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes uh, people, just because it's more convenient and it's not just because uh, they're not familiar with the technology, mm -hmm. they might use a small um, pocket device uh, like the Bookport Plus or the um, uh, PlexTalk Pocket player mm -hmm. and, and for screen reader users um, I have a Bookport Plus in my hand at the moment just so you you know um, and it really does sit in your hand it's very small and uh, you can have a lot of content in that through a, an SD card mm -hmm. um, I, I put it into it um, there are two ways uh, there are some people who use CDs and they take their uh, their CD player mm -hmm. um, there are a number of different ways and you don't have to be a whiz-bang technology person to use them. The Victor Reader Stream is also very popular. And one of the things about, say, the Victor Reader Stream and other devices is that it's a Wi-Fi device. It has the capability of um, streaming the content into it mm -hmm. so the book doesn't just have to be downloaded. But also you can use it for other things out in uh, audio land, whether it be internet radio stations and all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. So it's a, a real terrific gateway. 
Now we've just coming up to just only 15 minutes to go tonight for the webinar, so I'll do another reminder for all those people watching us from home. Thanks for tuning in. If you would like to ask a question to one of our expert panel, uh, you can email webinar at visionaustralia.org with your name and question, or you can send an SMS, a text message to 0438 792 407. So that's 0438 792 407. And I've actually got a question that's come through on the, um, the 3G player from Namoy. So, and he's asked, what's really good about the 3G player? I'm happy to answer that, Cass. Great. Um, what's wonderful about it is that you have instant access to books, um, that your books are chosen for you, they're online, no CDs, um, and you don't have to rely on anybody to help you. Um, it gives you total independence. We speak to people every day in the library who, um, when Daisy came in, they thought Daisy was wonderful and they wondered how they survived beforehand. And mm -hmm. now with the 3G player, um, people just really enjoy it because um, as I say, having access directly to the content, I don't like that book, um, they can get a new one the next day, I'll ring us up and we can give them another book straight away. They don't have to wait for a, a week for a book to arrive in the mail. Mm -hmm. So, Cass, can I add that sure. um, Jamie points out a very good advantage that you don't have to have the books chosen for you, but I'm uh, sorry, you don't have to um, choose the books yourself. They can be chosen for you from the criteria that you've um, already given but if you do want to choose your books you still can listen to them through the 3G player if you can access the um, online catalogue you just select the book and it goes to your bookshelf and mm -hmm. um, it's available when you uh, use the player so you've got both options and it is a very convenient machine. And I'd also add to that too um, Cass the access to our magazine and newspaper collection because before mm -hmm. if someone just borrowed CDs they didn't have access to our newspapers now with the 3G player, um, they can subscribe to their um, favourite paper. We have over 400 newspapers available mm -hmm. that people can subscribe to, local and regional and, and major metro newspapers. So they're also available as they become available to us and they're converted into Daisy, mm -hmm. um, like the Australian or the Sydney Morning Herald, um, they'll turn up on your bookshelf on your 3G player. And uh, yep. can I just say for those people who haven't seen a 3G player, it looks almost the same as your daisy that you have home already. It's got large buttons which are easy to see and use and it talks to you and it remembers where you're up to and it still has a sleep timer on it that reminds you, you know, that can turn the player off if you tend to doze off in books at times. So um, it's very much like the old um, daisy player with all the same features but it just gives you more flexibility that you can return a book and have a new book the next day. Fantastic, thank you. Now we've had a question come through from Kathy. Where do you get the book port plus within Australia? Uh, you contact your friends in America and order it from there. <laughs> so it's not available in Australia? It's not available directly in Australia, but doing stuff online these days, you know, I got mine within Less than two weeks from when I ordered it. Maybe the dollar was a bit better then, Steve, when you got yours. <laughs> it was too. <laughs> Fantastic. Now, but the Plex Talk Pocket is, uh, uh, and and the and the later version is virtually the same device, isn't it, Jamie? Yes. Same functionality. Yes, that's right. Very similar. The other thing we should mention is Braille. Um, mm. If you have a Braille note-taking device or a Braille display, you can take access uh, advantage of our huge Braille collection. Uh, braille books and also braille music and you can download them and read the BRF file on your device mm -hmm. um, and some daisy players also will read the BRF file like a word document or a text file so um, we actually encourage people and love people to use our braille collection. Fantastic. Now I have a question for both Jamie and Stephen. How do you both access your books when you're on holidays or when you're travelling about? Stephen, maybe you first. 
Yes, and just a postscript to that other question. It was from the um, APH, the American Printing House, that I got the book port. Cathy, if you're wondering, I, I couldn't quite remember when I was answering. Um, yes, um, I use my book port plus most of the time when I'm reading, and my wife uses a, a Victor Reader Stream, which is a very similar device. Mm -hmm. um, I find that very convenient because you can take it anywhere. You just make sure I've got it loaded up with uh, content before I go. Mm -hmm. I use my phone firstly, particularly now with the new app, but I also keep a backup of books on my uh, Victor Stream and also the Linear Pocket. I'm a bit greedy, you see. Big reader. Yeah. Um, the other thing is that I like, well, the, the Linear Pocket is great for recording and also um, great for um, accessing uh, some other content. And the Victor Stream, it's terrific for the um, podcast and web radio that Stephen was talking about earlier. So. Yeah, you know, I, I carry a few devices with me and, and highly recommend them all. Great. Now, we've had a question come through from Anne, and I might ask Anne or Anthea <laughs> to answer Anne's question, which is not confusing at all. Uh, is there a simple way to find an order of a, of a series of books if you wish to read them in the correct order? For example, the Barry Maitland series mentioned earlier. Yes, if in have a look on the catalogue record um, in iAccess and to look in the description, it will give you the series, where it is in the series. Or sometimes, depending on the publishers, uh, they might just say this is part of a series, but if it's actually in order, the catalogue record will note which number that book is. And can I make another suggestion? If you happen to be an internet user, and fairly good with Google. If you go to a site called Fantastic Fiction, uh, you can actually, it lists all the books in order and um, all the series in order by a given author um, and also whether a new book is being released soon. So you can look at our catalogue and the information will be there. Or if you want to have a written list to pre plan, what you're going to get, you might, and you're good with Google and um, the internet, you can look at Fantastic Fiction. And Anne and Nancy, you can also search by series with our catalogue, but even better, if um, you know that the book is in the series, if you open the title link of the book, there is a link that takes you to the series in the um, detail record page mm -hmm. on iAccess. So that's another handy hint to know. So you open the book title and where it says series, there's a link and that link then takes you to a page and it lists all the books, hopefully in the right order. Right. Thank you. Now we've actually had a tip come in from a uh, webinar participant, thanks for that, um, and that is letting us know that 3G player doesn't require the user to have their own internet. We provide the internet. Is that right? Can you just explain that a little bit for me? Yes, I'm happy to. The 3G player uses the um, Optus network mm -hmm. um, to access the library, so you turn on the play, it, it has a little modem inside it which then connects through the network and then connects to our network. Whereas yep. if you have the Wi-Fi player, that Wi-Fi player is configured, pre-configured by us before we send it to you, if we have your SSID and password, and um, then that uses your Wi-Fi to access our catalogue. Right. So I think the best way to describe the 3G player, it's like a mini computer in itself. Okay. All right, so we've heard a lot about how you can access books through our library, but I know there's other ways that people can get audio books out there. And what are some other ways that you can get accessible reading material? Um, I'm a bit like Jamie. I get my books from wherever I can lay my hands on them. Mm -hmm. um, I have a I get books from my local library. There is a app, uh, there's a number of apps. One app, one called Borrower Box, which is a free access to um, ex, um, audio titles and another one called Overdrive that you can add onto your iPhone or iPad and be able to access books, audio books that way. I also have a Kindle and a Kindle is quite good if you've got some vision because you can enlarge the print to fairly la uh, fairly big size. And so I have books on my Kindle and you can also access audible.com which is an American company which has over 150,000 titles that you can um, 
download. Now there's a cost in, uh, cost involved. They usually can give you get a month trial for free, and after a month, it's about fifteen dollars a month to subscribe to them. But they give you a discount on the books that you buy off them if you subscribe. So the books often come out at maybe only five or six dollars for an audio or audio book where if you were buying a paperback book in the shop you could be paying thirty odd dollars for a paperback book. So I sort of there is a variety of ways that you can get it. The ones from the library are for free. Um, and the Kindle, once you've bought the Kindle, you can download books once through once more through Amazon at reasonable prices. Um, it's just choosing what suits you and to give a variety of books and different access points. And I think it's uh, also worth mentioning that members of Vision Australia Library can also become members of Bookshare, the American Bookshare group. There, there is a cost to it, an initial joining fee of $75 and then a renewal fee per annum of $50, but it gives a an extra um, sort of about 20,000 titles that otherwise we wouldn't be able to provide. So. Fantastic. So, so there's a couple of different options available for people out there. Yes. Mm. Great. Yes. And we're actually coming towards the end of the webinar now. But before we go, I'm really interested in what one book each of our panellists is looking forward to this summer. So I know you've already got to say a good 13 books you'll, you could read and it's uh, down the end there, but if you could only pick one, what would your one book be? And Anthea, I'll go to you first. My book is Go Set a Watchman by Harper Lee and it's already set ready for, for me to start reading. Fantastic. And I also have one ready to go, which is Pushing the Limits, Life Marathons and um, Kokoda by Kurt Fernley. Mm -hmm. So that's sitting there waiting for me to read. Right. Well, I'm glad to hear you all have things sitting and waiting for you as well, despite being such avid readers. Makes us not feel so bad. And Jamie, what is your um, one thing? One, that's tough. The <laughs> Malat book, I think that'll be, although I'm, I'm, I know it'll be pretty dark, I'm, I am looking forward to reading that by mm -hmm. Clive Small, which was one of the top books coming out over summer. Fantastic. I know it's already out, that one, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. Yes, sorry, it's already out, but Malat, so I'm looking forward to reading that. Great. Thanks, Jamie. And Stephen? Um, I haven't read enough Peter Fitzsimons uh, material yet, so um, I'm going to read his story uh, of Charles Kingsford Smith. Looking forward to that. Oh, great. And I'll name mine as well. So I actually would like to read the book that was mentioned earlier, which is Magda Zubansky's memoir. I think that would be a really interesting read. It's really good. Reckoning. Yes, reckoning. That's, that's on my list also, but I didn't, I didn't have time. We've only could pick one, one. yeah. It's on my one. list. <laughs> on your list, okay. We've all got I've more lists. Read, I've already read it, but it's good. <laughs> um, so just starting to wrap up, I will just repeat how people can get support from the library. So how do, if anyone wants any help with anything we've covered tonight, how can they get in touch with someone in the library? I, um, you can give us a call on 1300 654 656 mm -hmm. or you can email us at library at visionaustralia.org mm -hmm. um, or, or we can leave a message if for some reason we're busy on the phones tomorrow morning. Or use the feedback page through iAccess as well. Yes. Great. And now we do have the holidays coming up. So when are we shut over Christmas? Mm. So the library will close at 2 p.m. on the 24th of December, which is a Thursday, and reopen on Monday, the 4th of January. Now, and during that time period, we are closed, but from now up until about the 18th of December, if members want to have extra books, we will do that. We're doing an allowance of up to 20 books per member to, to cover them over the holiday period so that they're not without any, any books to read. That sounds really good. What a great little bonus for the summer there. Yes. A few yes. extra books. All right, well, I'd like to um, say a big thank you to everyone who tuned in tonight and sent their questions through. Really, really enjoyed popping this webinar on for you and thinking about our great summer reading tips. And I hope that you found something really useful out of tonight. Um, we're happy to hear from you if you've got any feedback at all about the webinar. Just send us an email. It's webinar at visionaustralia.org. Love to hear from you. Any questions we didn't get to tonight, 
we'll follow up with you individually and, and provide our support as best we can. So I'd also like to say a big thank you to all the panellists. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. Happy it's reading, been, everyone. Really happy cool. reading and happy listening to all yes. your other audio. And Merry yeah. Christmas. Yes. Yeah. Enjoy, and enjoy reading. Yes. All right. And on that very positive reading note, I might leave it there for now and uh, wish everyone a very safe and happy summer holiday.